My kids have grown up on hardtail mountain bikes. They're hands down the best bikes for kids to learn how to ride trails on. Not only are they more affordable, but they're much lighter than a full suspension bike, and most importantly, they'll teach a new rider how to pick good lines and stay smooth. But once they're good at riding and grow big enough to fit on a 27.5 inch full suspension bike, it can really help take their riding to the next level. So the time has come to move the boys up to bigger bikes. And in this video, we're gonna show you the new bikes, how to set them up for a kid, and find out if these bigger bikes can really help take Milo and Owen's riding to the next level. Hey, what's up? I'm Milo Porter, and this is my dad, Eric. What's up, everyone? The boys got full suspension mountain bikes. They got Diamondback releases, and we're gonna get them set up today, and then we're gonna head down to Sedona. Milo, what do you think about getting a full suspension bike like this? Well, I've been riding a hardtail all my life, so like I'm pretty excited to go smash some rocks in Sedona with this thing. So I already got the bikes built up, but before we leave on the trip, we gotta get them dialed in and adjusted so it fits their body size and weight, and that way they can actually ride the bikes. And then along with that, you gotta make your bike look sick, right? Yeah. We got on competitivecyclist.com and we browsed around and found the parts that match this bike the best. So we got this sweet seat from SDG and it's black and orange, but it's also a little bit smaller. So the profile fits him a little bit better. So when he sits on it, it's more comfortable and it's out of the way. And then we also got the Deity Bar and Stem. So this is the Copperhead Stem. It's anodized orange to match. And then it's a 35 mil, nice and light stem. It's got five mil bolts on it too. So they're a little bit bigger and you never have to worry about stripping them out. And of course some orange grips to match it too. And they're a little bit smaller diameter so they'll fit his hands better. So head to competitivecyclist.com, chat with the gear heads, browse around and find some parts that are not only gonna look good on your bike, but fit good and make it feel better and pick up something new for your bike. And if you use code PORTERMTB15, it'll get you 15% off your first order. So let's get to this bike now and get it dialed for you so we can go to Sedona. Yeah. All right, grab those design three ways and let's get the bars done first. So we can take off the grips and then the brake levers. Okay. And then we'll take off the bar and stem. Get the dropper remote off. Too much. Too much. You gotta make sure not to back them out too much because then you'll lose little pieces on some of this stuff. And then let's take off the stem. So we'll take off the top cap, then loosen the stem bolts, and then we can slide that off. Put a new one on. Yep. Nice, you got no handlebars now. <laughs> nope. Can't ride it like that, can you? Maybe you can go like <laughs> that. Put these on. Ooh, that looks good. So you actually want your spacer to be taller than your steer tube. See how that is right there? So you snug it up and then you get your bars straight and then you tighten your stem bolts. Milo, I've got a really cool trick I'm about to teach you to keep your bars straight because that's one of the hardest things, right? Yeah. So what you do is you look straight down over your bike and you see there's the top of your crown right here and then there's the bottom of your bars. And as you move your eyes forward like this, it'll hit and you want them to hit at the same time. So if they're over like this, this gap is bigger than this gap. So what we'll do is straighten this out. Then you go kind of back and forth, back and forth, and match those up until it's perfect. Does that look good to you? Let me see. Yep, it's perfect. <laughs> cool, that's a cool way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. That's one of the things people struggle with the most is making it straight, and that's the best way I've found to do it. Let's put the brakes and shifters back on now. So dropper post first, because that goes inside your brake lever usually. Yep. And, and then, then your front brake lever. Then I like to put on the grips before I like tighten everything up so I can like feel it with everything. Yeah, me too. All the way. So rotate them around so the bolts are at the bottom. You can snug those up. Okay, it's starting to look like a bike again. Yeah, it is. What do you think about the orange setup? It's pretty cool. I like it. Matches yeah. pretty well. So the brakes I feel like should be right about here. So brake lever setup is really important for kids and we want to make sure not only is this slid outwards, see how much gap there is right there, so that when his hand is on the grip, his finger is at the end of the lever and you get the most amount of leverage that way. Then the next thing we're going to do is use this adjuster right here to pull the brake lever inwards. So you want to snug up your lever just enough that they'll move if you crash so it doesn't snap your lever off. Is it fun learning how to set up your bike yourself? Yeah. You can get a job at the shop soon. So it's really key to make sure that you can reach your dropper post. There we go. All right, go ahead and put the dropper up. 
So now we're gonna throw our new SDG seat on the bike. So unscrew one side quite a bit, and then get the front one now too. Slide the seat over to the side, and then you can pivot it upwards like that. Push it in like most of the way. Put that down, that's yep. it. Tighten this up until it flattens out. It adjusts the angle, right? So it gets nice and flat right here, so it's comfortable. And now we got the front in the right place. And then you can tighten the back up until it's nice and tight. That looks good, doesn't it? That does look good. I sit on it. It's squeaky. <laughs> it sounds like you're farting. How's the seat feel, Milo? Really good, actually. Is the angle good? <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing you don't ride in those pants, right? Yeah. <laughs> We've got this thing set up so he's ready to ride. Only thing we have left to do is suspension. The problem is he only weighs 100 pounds, so he doesn't weigh enough to actually use adult suspension like it's designed to be. The chart on this fork that gives you all the settings for your weight only goes down to 120. So he's getting close, but what I'm gonna have to do is go to the lowest setting, let a little bit more air out, and then make sure that the rebound damping isn't too slow. Because if I let too much air out to set the actual proper sag for him on this bike, the rebound damping is gonna come back really slow. And then what it's gonna do is pack up. So packing up on suspension is when you hit repetitive bumps and it doesn't come back fast enough to hit the next bump. So it gets kind of lower in the travel over each bump. You're just gonna be a little bit oversprung until you pack on some more weight. So okay. we'll keep feeding you and try. <laughs> Till then, you probably won't bottom out your bike. All right, you ready to take this thing to the desert? Yeah. Put it through its paces? <laughs> yeah. All right, Milo, first ride on the new bike, what we gotta do is push your O-rings down on your suspension so that we know how much you're using, and then we can adjust it after that and see if we can get it tuned in a little bit better. And those O-rings are gonna tell us how much travel we use, and yeah. then we can dial it in. Okay, we've been doing a little bit of smashing now. Let's check your O-rings on the suspension. It looks like you've been using about two thirds of your travel, Milo, um, about half in the back. So I think that's honestly about all we can do for you right now, unless we revalved yeah. it. Now it's time to get Owen's bike dialed in. What do you think about this thing? Oh, I can't wait. I think Owen likes the new bike. This is his first full suspension bike and his first adult size bike. True. He's been riding a Diamondback Sinker 24, which has been an awesome bike. You've ridden at the bike park. You've ridden it on jumps. Everywhere. Okay. Yeah, you do everything on that bike, right? Yes. This is gonna be a bit more of a monster truck for you. Let's go. Owen is a big fan of monster trucks, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is gonna be your all-terrain monster truck that you can pedal. I work really close with the product team at Diamondback to develop new bikes. And something I've been pushing for a long time is making an extra small size release. So this is the 27.5 inch wheel bike, 150 front travel, 130 rear. What we did on the extra small, which is only available with the release 4C, is we dropped it down a little bit lower for the standover and then it's a little bit shorter as well. So it's gonna be that bike for someone that's about five feet tall. Yeah, I'm say about four or five. You're four or five? Just about, yeah. So Owen's a little on the short side for this, but I think we're gonna be able to make it work. Uh, this bike is actually designed for people about five foot to five four. I'm a little bit worried that Owen just isn't tall enough for this dropper post. He's really excited about this dropper post, aren't you? Yeah. That was the first thing he said when he got this bike for Christmas. I finally got a dropper post. And look, my very first dropper post. No way. Yeah. The problem is, is you can't adjust a dropper post down from its maximum height. And we can't really cut the frame or anything else. So let's hop on the bike and see if it works for you. Yeah. Ooh, it's suspension. So a good way to tell how high your seat needs to be is if you put your heel on your pedal and then keep your hips straight, like don't drop one down to reach the pedal and then put your foot at the bottom of the pedal stroke. He can't quite reach his pedals with the seat all the way up. So that means it's about that much too high. Well, the bad news is you can't run this dropper right now until you're taller. No! You think? I do have a carbon seat post that's really light, and I have this nice light SGG saddle. It's probably gonna save at least another pound off the bike, and it's gonna make sure that the bike is set up for him and the seat height's in the right place. So we can take that all the way off like that. That comes out. Oh, oh wow, oh, I didn't know. That's a big difference. 
So using a solid seat post can save a lot of weight for a kid, which makes a big difference. But dropper posts are great too if you get one that fits the bike. There Whoop. we go. Uh-huh. See if it goes all the way down? It goes down. So now there's only one thing left to do. All right, Owen, since we got rid of the dropper and we're gonna session this steep zone, let's get your seat dropped down. Okay. I'm gonna have to get you a quick release. Yeah. So you don't have to use a tool every time, but for now, just this. we'll just use our multi-tool. I can't wait till I try to drop the post. I know. Okay, hey, drop it down. Oh, and I can't believe you're just riding up all these shelves. I think the big wheels are helping, huh? That was sick. Nice climbing. That was Thanks. ridiculous. So how's that feel versus the 24 inch bike? Way better. Does it feel like a monster truck? Yeah. It's so much easier. Does that make you happy? Yeah. So we're out on trail now. We've got some riding in and we're starting to see where the suspension is as far as when they're smashing stuff. We've gone up, we've gone down, we've hit some ledges. It's working really good, huh buddy? Yeah. What we want to do is see how much air pressure is in here and see how much we can let out. I've already set the rebound all the way to the easiest setting as possible. So the lightest rebound setting all the way to the minus. It's about where it can be. I might be able to let a little bit out, but if I let too much out, the rebound damping is going to be too slow. A good way to tell is if you're bouncing off of stuff and skipping around, Owen, Yeah. then your rebound damping is too fast. And if it's packing up and you feel like you're down too far in your travel more of the time, then your rebound damping is too slow. Okay. Another way to help make Owen's bike ride better is to lower his tire pressure. With these Kenda 2.4 inch tires, we can run about 15 PSI since he's so light. This will effectively add usable suspension to the bike and will really improve traction for climbing, cornering, and downhilling. What do you guys think about the new bikes and how we got them set up? Oh, they're way better. Oh, way better than my other bike. So much more, like, you can plow through stuff. It's insane seeing the difference in his riding from last year to this year, and he hasn't ridden since the fall. So it's definitely the wheel size that's rolling over stuff easier, as well as the front and rear suspension, longer wheelbase, all those things are gonna help you carry momentum, carry speed up stuff. So I'm a big advocate for getting kids on the biggest bike that they can fit on. So you have to be able to stand over it, but the bigger wheel size and the bigger bike is just gonna let you really monster truck over stuff, carry your momentum, and have a better time riding, as long as you can get your foot down when you need to. Remember to head over to competitivecyclist.com if you need any gear for your bikes, clothes or parts or anything, and talk to the gearheads. They'll help point you in the right direction. Stay tuned for our next video. We're gonna be down here in Sedona riding all kinds of cool stuff and having an awesome adventure, and we'll see you on the next one. You can barely get your feet to the ground, but you can shred when you're on it, right, Owen? Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah.